So red meaning they've watched it two or more times. That's really good. I'm really pleased with that. Most B2B content for the sales cycle sucks. In a landscape right now, when buyers have less attention than ever, sellers need to be able to stand out and create content that not only their prospects will watch, but that they'll want to share with others in the organization. And sellers are busy, really busy. So is it possible for a salesperson like me to create really good content that my prospects will enjoy without it taking up too much time? Let's find out. In this example, I'm gonna make a short personalized demo video that I can share with my prospect. I wanna make sure it's short, interesting to watch, and covers all of the key points that my prospect is interested in. We're gonna use CapCut to create the video for a few reasons. Firstly, it's free. It's available on all devices, including mobile, and it has loads of great features that I can use to be able to create a really great video. So when we first load up CapCut, uh, we've got this page here. It's asking me to create a new project or I can find any projects that I've started creating in the past. Once we've created the new project, uh, I'm gonna import some footage. Now CapCut is not a video recording tool, just an editing tool. So you will need to have some footage that you're gonna use to create the basis of your demo video. So you could um, import existing marketing content that you've been provided or record your own screen. Both Mac and Windows have native screen recording. Alternatively, you could use an app like Vidyard to record your screen and your camera. So I go to my screen and I'm gonna choose this demo content and I can choose to import it. You can also import any other images or other video content that you want. And then once you've got it, and just to the plus to add it to my timeline at the bottom, or I could click and drag it down. And I've got this footage, but it's very boring. It contains a lot of content that my prospect isn't interested in, and at the moment it's too long. So first and foremost, I'm gonna cut it down. As I click on different pieces here, it's just gonna select different points in the timeline. Uh, and then I've got this little split icon I can use. Uh, helpfully, it's given me the shortcut uh, which is Command and B. So I don't need to go up to here. I can just Command and B there. So I'm now just gonna cut out some pieces that I don't want until it's a nice short size that I can share. And I wanna keep it to about a minute. I really like that I can just move the mouse and then just at the point that I want to cut it, just Command and B is making it really quick and easy. So I've cut that down into a short one minute clip. Now what I wanna do is to record myself walking through that video. So I'm gonna use my phone, uh, I'm gonna record a video of me walking through this and then I'm gonna import that onto my timeline. So here's my video. Hey Tyler, great to meet you the other day. What is to put together this short video? There's the video I've made. Now I need to integrate this into my video. I'm gonna cut this clip and I'm gonna drag this into my timeline. This here is now playing over the top where I actually talked through the video as it was playing. And I've got this bit that's hanging over the edge. So I'm going to cut there and I'm gonna drag this into the timeline as well. So this is my main timeline. And this here is now talking over the demo. So I wanna have this as a little picture in picture. So what we can do here is you'll notice right in the top corner here, we've got these little resize options. So I can resize it. I'm gonna select the right clip and resize it. So now I can move this wherever I want over my demo video. Um, but it's still too big and I've got all of this extra like white space. So I'm gonna go here to crop and that's gonna let me just crop the actual amount of video. So it's just showing my little head here. I want this to be as small as possible just so that I've got as much space. So I'm gonna confirm and there we go. Now I've got a nice small video that I can also resize even smaller. The cool thing that I could do here now is I've just done a, an intro to Tyler. I could actually change that first start bit if I was sending the same video to somebody else. So you could add uh, just a different person's name or a different intro. So now I've got a pretty nice video I've put together, but I wanna just make it stand out. So I'm gonna use some stickers and some transitions to make the video really pop. 
So you can access stickers uh, and any other effects up here in the top panel. I'm gonna just gonna add some transitions to the points where my clips switch over. I'm gonna click on where I want it to be in the timeline. Then I'm gonna download and add it. And we can see here it's added this little gray effect. So when I press play, your automation. So as you can see here, I like um, that. Something that's a little bit annoying with the stickers is I'd really like there to be a search function. Um, at the moment, we've got these like different categories, but I'm going to stick with this trending. I'm guessing they're the ones that are used the most. Um, and I can see a few helpful things like arrows, little mouse pointers. I'm going to add some arrows. I'm noticing that a lot of the best, most usable stickers do seem to be only available with Pro, which is understandable, but also a little bit annoying. And it, and it is really hard to find the right stickers that I want to use. Move this, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. So as I'm just watching the video, I'm just deciding where I want them to start and finish. So that feels good to me. Oh, that's nice, that's good. So I can use the, the, little, this, the little arrows here to, rotate it and move it around so now i can say parts of a video or whether they've watched it two or three more times shown by the color so red meaning they've watched it two or more times nice i like this i just want to add a little intro and outro transition click on the clip and then you can go here to animation fade in the beginning hey tyler great to meet you. so that's nice little short fade in and Ideally, some sort of fade out if I have it. So fade out. Nice. Next call with Jesse. That's really good. I'm really pleased with that. I could have probably spent less time with the stickers if I knew where they were. So that's something that I've learned. And I think if I was to do it again, um, I would know the types of things I wanted to add. What's really interesting about this as a solution for sellers is with all of these projects that you create, they are infinitely reusable and repersonalizable. Is that a word? Now the important thing here is now I've saved this project, I could reuse a lot of these parts. So save myself even more time when I wanna make a similar video for a similar prospect in a different deal. I can go to this demo analytics project. I could select duplicate. And now I've got a copy of it. I can now cut out the footage of me talking to specifically to Tyler and create a new um, a new talk track where I'm speaking to a new prospect. Or I could just replace this start bit. So a really nice way of being able to personalize this type of content at scale. So final thing is sharing it. Now you could share a short video like this directly over email or a Google link. Um, but I would recommend using a tool like Vidyard, which is free to use to upload the video and then share it. That will keep the video web-based uh, and ensure that your prospect doesn't have to download anything. So what do you think? Is this the sort of thing that you as a salesperson could do? And what impact do you think it could have on your deals? Would love to hear what you think in the comments. If you want more information on what you can do with CapCut, more advanced features, then let me know and look forward to seeing you on the next one.